Now that we know how to manually add configurations and modify the features and the sketch properties for those, let's talk about another option that we have, and that's design tables. SolidWorks has some built-in Excel functionality that allows us to simplify the process of making these new configurations. It also allows us to make use of any Excel functionality that we want. To handle this, what we need to do is go to Insert, you want to scroll down to Tables, and go to Design Table. Again, you must have Microsoft Office installed on your machine. Any other type of non-Microsoft Office word processors or Excel type programs are not going to be able to work like Microsoft Excel does. So again, you need to have Microsoft Office installed if you want to use this option. The first thing you see when this opens is a source option. You have blank, auto create, and from file. If you already have created a design table, you can link it to that file. This is a nice option, but it does come with some challenges. When you're linking to a file, you can have SolidWorks be able to manually overwrite the file, or you could have the file locked based on the Excel sheet itself. So there's some two-way functionality that could happen there. Blank just basically inserts a blank one. We're gonna talk about AutoCreate because this is the most common option. And again, we're not really diving too deeply into this. So if you guys are just trying to play with design table functionality, you're gonna use the AutoCreate option. As we scroll down, you notice that we have some edit control options as well. Allow model edits to update the design table or block model edits that would update the design table. This is essentially saying that you can still modify the model and have it modify the parameters inside the cells in Excel. Or you can block model edits in SolidWorks and only allow the user to modify the design table to change that. It really depends on what kind of control you want over the user's interface. Now in this case, we're gonna just leave it as the default setting, but notice that you do have some control over that. And lastly, we have some options. Add new rows and columns in the design table for new parameters, new configurations, warn when updating the design table, and enable cell dropdown list. Now the two options in the beginning, the new parameters and new configurations, what this means is if you have a design table in your file and you start adding features, adding sketches, adding whatever to it, it will automatically try to collect those and ask you if you want to put them in the file. These are really the best option unless there's some reason that you want to lock the design table down. So I like to leave these checked by default. Warn when updating design table, always a handy one. If you don't want it to update, you can select not to. And then the cell dropdown list, it really depends on what you're going to do in the back end of Excel. If you're going to make use of some cell functionality, if you're going to use dropdown lists, or if you're going to use some sort of DirectX interface or API, then you really need to be concerned with these. If you're not, if you're just going to use it as a regular Excel worksheet, then this isn't really going to affect you at all. So once we have all those options selected, we're gonna say okay, and it automatically brings up Excel inside of SolidWorks. So you notice that our tabs are gone for features and sketches and surfaces, and we have essentially the Excel interface. Now there's a little bit of a difference to it. Obviously you see Enterprise PDM is up here if you're connected to a PDM vault, and you don't really have exactly everything that you do in Excel, but most of the functionality is built in here. And you'll notice what we have on the screen is a few cells here that are already populated. We have default option two, new two, new three. These are configurations that we've already created. You'll also notice that their description comes in. This description was inside of the properties when we created those configurations. The color value comes in automatically and it's just using a default color because this is not the file that we use display states on. This is still the base configuration part file. So it does automatically bring these values in and you can choose not to if you want to. And then you see that we have the length, the width, the height, the offset, the cut. And then this section here with the dollar sign state at offset cut, this determines whether or not it's suppressed. So there was a suppression in one of our features or in option two where we suppress the cut. And that's what this S means right here. So what does this mean for us? What can we do with this? We can add new configurations. For instance, we can say new four, new five, new six, and add them pretty quickly. Now, if we want to modify their description, we can put whatever we want into here, or we can use the same name nomenclature, and we can move on. If we don't populate any of these cells, it will grab the default. But in most cases, you're going to want to populate these with something anyways. So for instance, if we want the length in this one to be 250, 300, 350, we can quickly add those values. The width, 125, 150, 175. The height, 30, 40, 50. Offset value, let's just say that we want to keep this 5, 10, 15, and then the cut depth. 
keep them all five. And then let's just say that in this case, we actually want to suppress it in our new six configuration. Now, once you're done with this, all you do is click back in the modeling window. It'll generate those new configurations. We'll say, okay. And now you'll notice that icons change a little bit. We now have an X next to them. And the X is really just the Excel logo. So it's just telling you that these were created or modified in Excel. And you'll notice that we have new configurations. If we go to new four, new five, new six, you can see in this one, we suppress that cut feature. In new five, we modify the values, new four, new three, and go back to the originals, and all of them are still there. So it was a very quick way for us to modify those values and add them in. Now, there are a few ways that we can edit this as well. The design table comes in a folder called tables. If we right click on it, we can edit the feature, which allows us to edit the properties from which it was created. We can right click on it and edit table, which brings it up in the SOLIDWORKS modeling window. And you'll notice that it's asking us to add rows and columns. If we have things like custom properties we've added, in this case, it's trying to add a part number, then we can manually select those and we can add them into the file. I'm gonna say cancel because I don't wanna add it. And then you can see we have the Excel window pop up in here. You also notice that it repopulated the state of the feature for the offset cut. It's got unsuppressed and suppressed. There's one last option that I wanna talk about and that's right clicking and editing table and new window. This actually brings it up inside of Excel. So you have full Excel functionality and you can do things a lot easier if you wanna to start to add Excel functionality, like in the data section, if you want to start to create dropdown lists, or if you want to start adding some API functionality by adding a button that does something or sorts something, you can basically hide what you're seeing here and only show the user some dropdown options. Let's say that you want them to select a configuration and manually input some values here. All that functionality can be built in, and it really just takes your knowledge of Excel and how far you can push that. The big thing that you need to know is the format of a design table is set. You cannot modify the format. And what I mean by that is the first row is going to say design table four and the part file or assembly file or whatever you're working with. And then this row is going to be blank, and then you're going to have description, color, blah, blah, blah. And you can actually add more functionality in here if you want. For instance, back in here, we have our first feature called Boss Extrude 1. So if we open Excel back up, we could actually come in here and say dollar sign, state, at, and then we would say Boss Extrude 1. And we could modify this. For instance, if there was a configuration we wanted to suppress it, we could go ahead and do that. Close out this window, it'll regenerate. And now if we go down to new six and rebuild it, everything gets suppressed. So this is a good way that you can quickly add configurations, quickly add some options. And again, if you have the Excel knowledge, the Excel functionality, you can take it pretty far. I have done a few cases where we've done some API interface where we gave the users a pop-up window to deal with and didn't let them manually manipulate the values, didn't let them add configurations. And you can also just do it directly in Excel. Like I said, you can hide cells and you could only show certain things, drop down lists and allow them to manually select from options you want. For instance, if you want them to modify the dimensions, but you only want them to be able to do it in quarter inch increments or select between three options or whatever the case is, that functionality is there if you know how to use it.